All right, so readers claim they want certain representation in books. We have heard a lot of readers say they want older characters, they want fat characters, they want people of color, but then they don't necessarily buy those books. So how can we give readers what they ask for if they won't buy it? Um, I'm gonna start with Ruth. Can we always trust readers who say they want something other than cis gender conforming novels? And how do we reach the readers who will buy the books outside of that? I think we only have 55 <laughs> minutes for this panel. Um, I think there are, I think there are different ways of writing. There are different ways of getting a diverse slate of characters into a book. Um, I know authors who have been writing non-binary characters for years and the characters identify as non-binary in dialogue in the book. And if you would, you know, say to an audience, are you looking, you know, if, if you, and, and still you will have readers saying, we want more characters like this in books and they don't even realize that they're reading books with that representation. So I think, I think you can definitely trust readers who are saying that they want certain kinds of characters in books. Um, it's your job as, your, it's your job as an author, as a marketing person, as, a, as an editor to, um, to get great books. And great books will find readers, it may not be immediate. It may not be immediate um, because in general, we are all creatures of habit, right? We're all creatures of habit. We all want, right? We all want the same thing again and again and again, but different. Um, I think we have to be patient. I think we have to be patient and we have to keep working to grow audience for books that may on their face be different to what was being written um, before. So yeah, I think you can trust, I think you can trust readers. I think you can trust readers. I think also that when readers say we want book X and you say, here's book X, maybe, maybe readers have responsibility too. Um, to actively support authors who are doing things that may on, on their face be less lockstep. Okay, so this leads into, Regina, you're also a poet. Do you think it's harder to sell a novel than it is to sell poetry? Um, when you're selling something that's not as obvious or as easy to hand to someone, is there a challenge there? Um, well, I don't have a book of poetry yet, but um, I've had poets, lots of poems published. Um, I think it's harder, unless you are an author probably who's with a big house, then you have a lot done in, in favor of your book getting out there. Um, I think when you're with a smaller house, it's a little bit more, um, it's, it's a little harder because you don't have maybe like the publicist and the marketing person and the this and the that and all of that. So it's more on you. And if you're new, um, if you're a new author, that can be a little daunting. It's like, well, what do I do? <laughs> how do I make sure my book gets out there? What am I going to, you know, how am I going to get some sales? And um, so, you know, um, Luckily, I have other people who have published and I can speak with them and they said, well, this is what you should do. And this is that, you know, um, so that was has been helpful. But I think it's I think it's um, it's more difficult um, in terms of just trying to get your work out there and trying to get it seen and putting it in front of people um, when you're not with a really big 
house per se. Yes. So, well, what do you think about all of this? Do you um, find that readers respond well to the things that they're telling you that they want? Um, you are giving a fairly standard um, lineup of like slightly masked, slightly femme, and they're together. Do people respond better to that than if you were to throw a wrench in that plan? Honestly speaking, I mean, if you look at the top, let's see the top 50 on Amazon, you know, not, not even just my books, that's, that's the bulk of what you see. You know, I think that readers do want that, but I think that we as authors have a responsibility to, to make our books more inclusive and more diverse because that's the world we live in. We don't live in nice little, you know, single, single color, single presenting worlds. We live in the larger world. You know, I think one of my favorite movies is the American president. And there's that scene where Martin Sheen and uh, Michael Douglas are playing, uh, uh, playing pool. And one of them says, we need to fight the fight that needs fighting, not to fight the fights we can win. And I think the same thing comes in, in fiction. I think that sometimes we, we shouldn't just write the books that we know will sell. I think we need to write, write the books that need to be written. You know, when I look back, when I was growing up, if I would go to Walden Books or Borders, there wasn't any lesbian romances on the shelf. So my representation wasn't there. So I think if we continue to write these books that reflect the, the, the larger world, they'll, they'll, they'll sell because people want to see themselves. 